go? Well, there I was. I walked to town. Sit. You want to sit for this? I was walking to town to go to the store to get something for the market. And there I was walking down the back lane, which is the shortcut. And there, by the dumpster, I saw something. Something quite peculiar. So I went to go see what it was. And... to retire. At that moment, I decided I would marry that woman and help her retire there. And now, all my plans gone. All the more reason, all the more reason why Simpson's suds must continue to prosper. For now, I shall take all the money from the company and use it to establish a foundation the Tabitha Simpson Lake District Walking Foundation. <laughs> oh, Father, call on me to help you, please. I am an asset to this family. It's time that you see that. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> My friends, our dear St. Mary Mead's most dashing and professional detective and spectrocratic was on the case. Madam Blackwell, thank you for allowing me into your parlor. Oh, it is a pleasure, Inspector Detective. Please, sit. I will have some lady fingers brought out momentarily. Let me ring for them. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be here soon. I would love some lady fingers. May I first flatter you by saying that... Lady fingers? Mama, I don't want to be your servant. Oh, darling, you know it saves us money. Please, just play along with me this one time. Please go get a plate of lady fingers and bring them to us. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Your daughter seems to have such disdain for you. In front of strangers, no less. Well, I think that she's in a bad mood. Perhaps. That's all. Nothing more. I can see how suspected murder in this town of St. Mary Mead could rile her feathers. But yes. back to yes. my flattery. Blackwell soups. Oh, for years I remember as a little boy dreaming of being a detective inspector as I am. I would sit in my tub. I would scrub myself every crevice and pore with your soaps. Oh, that is so lovely to hear. I must say that your skin has developed 
Thank you so much. It's no doubt to your formula. Well, thank you. Now, on to business. Yes. You see, the matriarch of your rival soap business yes. was found deceased this morning, and it's believed that foul play was involved. Oh, dear. Not again. You know... Again? Well... Has this happened before? Well, not with people, but with cats, I must say, that there was a series of cats that went missing, and we never did figure out where they were going. But go on, please. It is a tragedy and a mystery indeed, so... Yes, it is terrible to hear. But you suspect foul play? Madam Blackwell, there has been a foul rumor that has run across my desk that your husband was having an affair with the woman. Oh. Is there any credence to this? Please. Oh, dear. Inspector Detective, you are a humorous young man. My husband would never do such a thing. Oh, no. We loved each other dearly. You see, we met on a cruise. Oh, it was lovely. Both of us in the Atlantic Ocean on a ship for three months. <laughs> I saw him for the first time as he descended a circular stair down to the deck where they were playing cribbage. I did not know how to play, but at that moment, as he descended, there was a beam of light that came through and shone upon him, and he was nothing more than a god. I must say that at that moment, I fell in love with him, and I courted him the entire three months. By the time we got back, Inspector, we were married. Dear. Well, it seems like at one point in time, we did have quite a stunning relationship. Yes, indeed, we did. But what about these days? I hear that old man Blackwell has not seen his face. I haven't even seen him around your manor today. I would like to shake his hand if I could. Oh. What with his tallness, I hear he's two feet taller than a normal man's height, which has been hurting his back as of late. He's uh, been yes. stuck in that wheelchair. Well, he's actually in traction at the moment, so he can't possibly see you. I would love for him to meet you. In fact, it would be an honor for him to meet you, Inspector. But he's laid up as it is, and his body is being tractionized from one end to the other. I see. I Forgive this intrusion. No idea. Yes. The lady fingers. Thank you. Thank you. These look delightful. Please. <coughs> Raspberry. My favorite. Oh, how lovely. Yes, yes. I'm so sorry for this intrusion, but a woman so domineering as yourself certainly would like a man who can <coughs> handle her. And your husband being out of commission as of late, how has that impacted your more secluded interactions? Inspector Detective, that is a bit private, but I will share with you something that I recently learned. <laughs> I am more than soap. <laughs> Think about that. Is Would that I... a new slogan? <laughs> Very well, maybe. It's a discovery that I made, and to tell you the truth, I have found that I can make my way quite well without my husband. In fact, he's been in traction for a while, and things have been running smoothly well. Just across town, Charles was having a meeting with someone else. <coughs> Charles, thank you so much for meeting with me at this time. I'm so very sorry about your, your mother. Thank you, Margaret. I came as soon as I could, you know, as, as soon as I could. Are you all right? Margaret, my heart is broken. Mama, she was the only one that I thought could understand me, and before I had a chance to tell her about my dream, she's gone. I'm so, so sorry. I feel so bad. Jeez, we've been friends for so long. And Growing up together, I felt like your mother was almost like my mother. You're so sweet. I'm so, so sad. 
But there is something else I was hoping to talk to you about. Please. And I hope this isn't coming into forward, but I understand that your mother was murdered. <coughs> that seems to be the case. And I have an old aunt. You, you may have seen her around the neighborhood. Her name is Miss Jane Marple. Yes, yes, of course, Miss Marple. I... Yes. But I took it upon myself to call her and have her come over because she's such a brilliant woman and she likes to tell her murder. Not committing them, but solving them. Yes, yes, her <laughs> reputation is well known for yes. being. Is she here? Is she supposed to come here now? I have invited her here. I hope it's not too forward. No, no. Oh, oh she's here now. Oh, oh Miss Marple. Oh, darling, Auntie, Margaret. Auntie, yes. So lovely to see Auntie. you. Charles. Charles. Please have a Margaret. seat. Margaret. Charles. Have a seat. Margaret. <laughs> you go a long way back, do you not? Oh, yes. Have yes. a seat. Oh, please, my dear. So, Charles, I have filled in and Jane a bit with the details of what I know. I am so sorry for your loss. And, Margaret, I wish for you to stay. It has been my wish ever since I saw you both playing together at the sandbox <coughs> that the two of you would one day finally act upon your feelings and marry. Well, uh, Jane, uh, uh, please. Uh, oh, I'm an observer. I may be a spinster, but I'm observant. Well, uh, Margaret, you are a lovely woman, and uh, I'm quite flattered by this. <laughs> but um, I'm. So I apologize, my, my heart is not in the right place. I moment. know, I'm so sorry to be so brazen in such a horrible moment, but you see, it just needed to come out finally. And, well, I am also very close to the detective inspector, and so yes. I will do my utmost to assist him. Thank you so much, Miss Marple. And maybe, Aunt Jane, you could assist me in helping to get to know Charles even more deeply than we already do. Maybe perhaps I could get a job with you and work with you, and then you could see where your heart really is. I've left the family business. <laughs> Father and I, we had an argument and I decided to go. So I'm sorry, I will not be able to assist you in that department. Oh, no problem. <laughs> well, my <laughs> dear, why don't we go back to my place and continue tea there? <laughs> Come, Lady Blackwell, none of your excuses. I will speak to him at once. No, no, he's in traction. Not be spoken to. Head to foot, I say. Head to foot. All strung out. Vocal <laughs> cords as well, you see. His, his spinal cord was compressed. Being such a tall man, he was under so much compression for so many years, he actually shrunk a few inches. You're lying. <coughs> oh, how do you know? Because I know you, Peggy. You think you know me? I know when you're lying. Tell me the truth. Oh, Your yes. husband is dead, is he not? Yes, he is dead. He is dead. But, as I recently learned, <coughs> I am more than so. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Not at all. <laughs> well, you see, all of this, and let me just show you out the window. All of that was made upon the soap. Did you murder your husband, Peggy? How dare you? How dare I? Do you think I don't know what you're capable of? <clears throat> I keep my tongue where it belongs, and when I see someone reeking of murder, I know whether to breathe air of it or not. I shan't have to say a word about that. But... I must say that your tongue <coughs> is showing too much right now, and if you're not careful, it may be chopped off. It may be chopped off. <laughs> Oh, you understand now, don't you? Yes. <laughs> After she spoke those words, someone in our story was murdered. But who do you think it was? Yes, my friends, can you guess who was murdered? The accountant. <laughs> the accountant. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and the poor sod's body was discovered like this. Oh, yeah. darling, darling, you must comfort me in my hour of deepest sorrow. Of course, my husband has passed and now my accountant. Oh, dear. How will we get on without it? I shall never forget it. Please sit and I shall tell you how I found the body. Oh, dear mother. Oh, you found it? I did. I came home from my bridge engagement. Yes. I thought, oh, I shall talk to Evelyn, see how things are going. I walked up the stairs. Her office door was ajar, strangely open, cracked ever so slightly. From inside, I could hear a slight hissing sound. I thought, how strange. What is she doing in there? Breathing? So I pushed open the door. I looked about. I could not see her, but yet this hissing sound became louder. And as I walked in, I saw her upon the floor, laying there with air, leaving her body ever so slightly, <laughs> like a tire with a puncture wound, hissing. <laughs> oh, my darling, I shall never ever be able to look at a tire again. <laughs> Mother, you're not lying, are you? You've lied so much. <coughs> You don't know, but I overheard you talking to the detective. You told him father was alive. I, I don't want to continue these lies. Darling, if you wish to have a lifestyle that you are used to, then you should go along with the lies that I present. But I am not lying about the death of our accountant. I assure you, I found her in such a way that I am telling you the truth. <laughs> Think for leaving me, I have some important information to share with you. Company, please take a seat. It's my office, after all. I ought to be hospitable. It's about that woman, Tabitha. I went through her drawers, and I found something most peculiar. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You went through her drawers or her drawers? Her drawers, right. <laughs> and I found these letters. Oh, yeah. They are most perplexing. Please, place them on my desk. Yes. I saw what you did. I saw where you went. I saw what you saw. Where's the specifics? <laughs> <laughs> seem rather thrown by this. <laughs> well, it's not helpful at all. Clearly, somebody was watching her. Clearly somebody saw what she was me. Well, what? I want to know. Inquiring minds need to know. Craig. <laughs> Humphrey, I think you've missed one clue which might lead us. Not the content of the letter, but what the words are written in. Smell. Oh. Rather fragrant. Yes. Well, how could I possibly miss that? As a young boy, I would use the product in my tub. Raspberry soup. <gasps> Blackwell soup, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. But of course, I didn't think to smell these. Oh. Oh. oh dear. Well, that's specific, isn't it? <laughs> so, Hopper Dick, I believe that leads us back to the Blackwells. Yes. I shall go back and I shall search the drawers over there. They Charles! I tell you, my boy, the pathetic police around here have made no progress whatsoever in discovering who killed your mother. I have had it up to here with stress and pain. Have you decided to come back and fulfill your filial duties? No. I decided to go on my own path, the path of my true heart. Fine, then. I have not only lost a wife today, I have also lost a son. I warn you, Charles, pain is coming. I warn you, Charles, pain is coming. Well, my dear friends, what do you think? Another death? <laughs>
<laughs> no, not yet. My dear friends, look at the time. I believe we should take a nice little break. <laughs>